or who's who's here for the first time? So it looks like everyone raised their hands both times, but you, you all do have two hands. So the, the thing to know is this is not just a local thing happening here in Victoria. It's a whole international competition. The format is trainers get 20 minutes. There's three rounds. The winners of the first two rounds, by your votes, paint some time in the third and final round. The winner of that round wins the night. The winner of the night paints again at the city finals in June, I believe. And the winner of the city finals goes on to the national finals in July. And this year, the international final plays in Japan in August. So it, it's a, a huge tournament. And somewhere right now in, in a local, there's a painter painting who's going to win the international championship. So that, that's pretty exciting. And we've sent some Canadian winners from BC before. An international yet from, from Canada. Maybe because we haven't done an international finals yet. So the first international art battle winner could be here painting right now. Wow, amazing. So that's the format. They get 20 minutes, it's amazing minutes. Usually we do a, a circle and you can walk around. But we're really grateful to even be able to do this given the important public health man. So we've got a seated event tonight. Uh, please don't leave, leave your seats unless you need to go to the washroom. Uh, the bar staff will set your tables. No mingling. No mingling, okay? We don't want to see any mingling. But you can enjoy. They're all going to be painting with their easels facing you. You can check out their clothes from behind as well. It's a, it's a wonderful fashion show. And every piece you see painted will be available for auction. You vote and you bid on the auction by clicking the link to arrive. So again, do not <laughs> reply. I do the text. <laughs> Lindsay gets lots of texts if you reply to <laughs> click the link and you can vote and bid on the paintings. Uh, as well, if you are tagging for social media, there's quite a lot of Art Battle accounts. So just make sure that you do tag Art Battle Victoria because that's the one for our city event here. I think that's most of the housekeeping and description of the event out of the way. So without further ado, we will introduce our round one painters. Let's get it started with, drum roll please. First painter is Julie Gagné, AKA Juju. <laughs> Battling since 2016. She is a colorful competitor and a master of psychedelic impressionism. She paints, she draws, she does installation art. Her favorite things about battling are the challenges and the visibility. And she has a unique use of warped portraiture, bold lines, and electric color, which are identifiable features of her signature style. She often does live painting at music festivals and events. Give it up for Julie. Next up, at easel number two, we've got Jessica Stepushin. She has been battling since 2018. So no stranger to the comp with a looser feel, often favoring abstract compositions, working primarily with acrylic paint and exploring the roles of expressive underpaintings along with stark lines and edges. She's also a graduate of the Victoria College of Art and has a diploma in fine art from 2009. So not new to the game. Let's give it up for Jessica. Next up, at easel number three, we have got Chris Casson. Casson? We're going with Casson. All right. Uh, this is a bold competitor. He's drawn to the exciting contrast and details in his work. He does painting, sculpture, photography, drawing, carpentry, acting. What doesn't he do? He's got a variety of painting styles. He works in very detailed and naturalistic ways, as well as simple and bold. He still likes finger painting, also. Will we be seeing some finger painting tonight? Yeah. We're going to see some finger painting tonight. He started painting in grade 10, probably started in kindergarten, because it also says he's been drawing since the age of three. So he's a lifer. Give it up for Chris. And last but not least, waiting to make a dramatic stage entrance at Easel Force, Danzak. Amazing. All right. Uh, 
he is a gallery owner. He paints in the zone between naturalism and abstraction. He's, a, he's here from Salt Spring. Right on. Nice. All the way in from the island. He's got a master's degree in architecture from University of Manitoba. 40 years of international architectural practice, including projects in London, Qatar, Trinidad and Tobago, and San Francisco. And throughout his education and career, making and painting and drawing, he's, he's found his passion. And now that he's retired, it's his full-time endeavor. Right on. Give it up for Dan Zach. And these are our four painters for round one. So, you know the format. We've got 20 minutes. Audience, are we ready? Painters, are we ready? So we're ready. I'm gonna get my timer ready. We're gonna count it down from 10, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, let's paint. And we are off to starting round number one for Art Battle Victoria tonight. Uh, so welcome to everyone who's watching out in the internets with us. My name is Morgan Booth, uh, and I am here with Art Battle co-founder Simon Plashkis. Hello, hello. And Very happy we, to be here. And we're your, co we're your commentators for tonight. Yeah, well, you know, we're uh, we're bringing it to you. Not everybody can be there. We have a very limited audience on account of this whole continued COVID situation. Um, but the, through the magic of the internet, we all get to uh, we all get to join and watch. So thank you for joining us, all you folks on PBM TV and on Facebook uh, and on YouTube, and I think even a couple of other spots. But those are the biggies. Um, and so thank you for being here. We're going to see some great art tonight. Yeah, 19 minutes on the clock, uh, 20 minutes total for these artists to go from blank canvas to awesome masterpiece. You guys are going to vote at artbattle.com slash vote uh, for the best painters tonight. Yeah, you can register to vote even right now. Uh, hop up there. Uh, uh, you throw in your phone number, you get a special voting link and you can vote, you can bid. Uh, we will ship these paintings and we will ship them uh, in Canada and uh, internationally. All right, Morgan, what do we see here? We got we got uh, one of our artists is uh, on the ground. That's always an interesting technique. I believe that this is Dan Zach and we've got some uh, good compartmentalization going on with uh, some painter's tape already. I love it when the painter's tape comes out. It leaves such... You know, even if you just put a, a bunch of, you know, random mishmash on there, when you peel that tape off, you get those perfect clean lines and it's such an attractive piece. And if, you know, even, even better, if you're a good painter, uh, you can have an even better result. Absolutely. It always the, the last minute tape pulling always gives my brain tingles. Totally. It's it's like that visual ASMR stuff. Exactly, sure. exactly. Yeah. It, 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 like how clean is that line? Is it super clean? Is it the <laughs> tiny little bit that bleed under? So satisfyingly crispy. It is, it is, exactly. Uh, what do we got here? Is this, uh, this is a bird of some kind? Uh, uh, I'm I sure. believe that that is Julie Gagne at uh, easel number one. And yes, I think that you're right. I think we've got a... A plumed bird, a bright yellow plumed bird. Is is this artist known for her for her uh, avian uh, uh, plumage? She is known for her avian plumage, actually. Um, I was just creeping her Instagram earlier today and uh, saw a similar bird rocking the uh, the feathered mohawk there. Fantastic! I love it. And I see here this artist uh, is uh, Jessica. Can't quite read her last name, Jessica. I love this palette. the the subtle, the slight shading difference between the sort of the the the, the rough shapes that she's got on there already is fantastic. Absolutely, and Jessica was actually a 2019 city finalist for Victoria, Ooh. so we can definitely expect a gorgeous piece from her. Great, great. Ooh, and we're headed. Are we hanging out with Chris now? Looks like we're hanging out with Chris. Yeah, Chris Casson. This is a, I love a good dry brush technique. You you get uh, you get something really special, um, and I think we're seeing clouds here. Cloud clouds and dry brush can be very very good friends. Oh yeah, you get that beautiful kind of soft soft blending 
uh, Mm -hmm. with the dry brush, especially in those clouds. And this is a bit of a lighter palette than I think that we're used to seeing from Chris. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, you never know where you go from here. Yes, that's true. Yeah, the the dry brush, especially if a lot of a lot of artists have you know have have their arsenal of of brushes, um, but one of the things I love about a dry brush is it preserves the potential to use the same brush throughout the entire painting, and that always really blows me away from a talent perspective. Mm-hmm. As long as you're wiping it off and getting all of that excess off, you can just keep carrying that. Ooh, check yeah, out well, I mean, Dan. You go, you go wetter and wetter. Yeah. So yes. we've got on the complete opposite spectrum. So with Chris, we've got really dry brush technique. And then Dan, we've got this like gorgeous watercolor application. Um, and I'm just, I'm living for this. Yeah, fantastic. The, um, oh, and already we have some, Ooh. we have the uh, tape coming I didn't think off. we were going to get that satisfaction that no. early. <laughs> there you go. I hope you guys are ready for that. That was special. Great. Yeah. Uh, definitely I'm feeling a landscape coming alive there. Yeah, and now we've got that kind of super crisp uh horizon line. Yeah. Okay, and back to hang out with Julie. Oh, this bird is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I'm liking the way that she's layered these colors here. She's got the cerulean over that bright primary yellow and it's mixing a little bit into some green tones, but we're still getting the vibrancy of each color. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. And some really interesting, like, fluid movement here. Oh, and now we're getting a, a dark background to kind of contrast the vibrancy of this bird. I'm really happy there's a background coming in. I, I didn't want to start talking about backgrounds because we're only, you know, whatever, 15, you know, five minutes in. Mm-hmm. But um, that's a very dark background. So it'll be interesting to see. Interesting. I mean, she's a lot of time left. It'd be interesting to see where she goes from there because, of course, you can't really do much on top of that black. Oh, and check out what Jessica's got going on. I'm really loving these uh, drips that she's just yeah. allowing to cascade throughout. Uh, what I'm getting the vibe of is a mountainous landscape. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I think I, absolutely. Uh, but of course, it's it's a very clearly a landscape painting. Uh, you know, it's it's very uh, painterly, as they say, because it's it's clear that because of the drips, this is this is calling to us and saying this is essentially a, almost a painting of a painting um, of of a mountainscape, and so that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And Julie, uh, or sorry, Jessica, um, has described her painting process and what she loves the most is to start with kind of a a super gestural paint sketch um, Mm. and allow the paint to work its own magic um, as well as herself directing it that's so cool it's like there's two painters she he's painting and also the you know the medium itself is having its own effect Mm -hmm. and i think that can also be said uh for dan when we pan over to him with his watercolor piece um, but for now, we've got Chris with this really, really subtle color palette. Um, and I think that this is a almost fully landscape round with uh, just with Julie and the bird and the rest looks like landscape. Well, that bodes well for Julie. Um, but uh, these are some very strong contenders, um, Jessica and uh, 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 Chris here. Is this Chris? Yes. And yeah, I'm really... This in- is- I'm I'm so into this the subtlety here. Yeah, I wonder if there's going to be any sort of high, you know, darker highlights that come off on the uh, the top. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not looking for that. Um, it is a it's a beautiful, but it's hard for the audience, the in person audience, to appreciate it from that distance back without it. I think. Yeah, it, uh, seeing whether or not he's going to add contrast into that because it is a really beautiful subtle piece. Um, but that's a great point in terms of battle strategy and considering the audience, you have to think of the piece functioning as its own work of art, but also as a performance piece. And is it going to be, uh, translated to the audience in the room? Because it might be too subtle. Yeah. Usually of course, um, art battle is 
in the round and the audience moves around. But um, what, what we're doing here in Victoria is an accommodation for the uh, local COVID restrictions. We have actually a seated audience, which is very unusual for us, um, but it's an interesting experiment. But of course the audience sort of has to, um, you know, look around uh, the painters as they're moving. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, there's a bit more of a reveal and uh, uh, at, at the end, it has kind of the feel of a bit of a, um, an airport uh, art auction, you know, like a seized art goods. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll see how how they how they like it at the end here. Yeah, and I think it'll probably create a lot of good opportunity for kind of in depth conversations mm -hmm. uh, between the people that are are sitting and having an opportunity to really talk about their observations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm liking this bird more and more. The hair, uh, I mean, feathers, I guess, on the top here, that just, this is a beautiful, like, a abstract, but yet sort of, you know, it shows a lot of movement, even though the, 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 you feel the bird is, is holding still. So you get, like, a, sort of the, the bit of the feather, the feathers um, quivering in the wind almost from the movement uh, uh, from, from the brush application. Oh, totally. Great point. Yeah, I think that uh, when she added that texture, it, like, it definitely created that kind of that curl, that movement. Uh, yeah, was that so, a palette knife? Is that a palette knife or, or a brush? I see some, you know, some really um, sort of defined um, uh, structure and shape, almost texture there. Mm -hmm. I think that we're getting brush now, but it might have been knife mm -hmm. in uh, in that plumage earlier. So I was a little bit worried that she had too much done in a short amount of time, but I can tell with the way that she's working now that she's going into more of a yeah, refinement exactly. space. Working in the eyes mm -hmm. and, the, and the details of the animal. Yeah. And here we're back with Jessica and Jessica is a painter's painter. I can, oh, wow. I can just tell you, I'm loving the like sumptuousness of the way that she's allowing these colors to blend into each other. Um, and yeah. a palette that's very tonal, that's very close to each other. And the, and the lights and darks are, fantastic you know you really you really get this sense of the of the atmosphere uh being in play here totally and the the way that she's got these drips going as well like when the piece is finished you're always going to think of it being created if that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly you have it on your wall and and you know that this was you know this was a painting that was made it was not printed off the internet yeah, and with those drips, you're still getting that sense of movement. So you're getting, like, it's a static object when it's dry, but it's still giving you that sense of immediacy. Mm -hmm. And we have a bit of that here in Chris's piece as well. It's um, that's cool. We, I think we have a structure there. There's a bit of a building off in the distance. Uh, and now we're going to get some foreground pieces that come in. Yeah, and I'm glad that we're getting um, some of that contrast that we were craving mm -hmm. and that I'm sure the audience um, is now getting an opportunity to really appreciate. Oh, my God. This watercolor feel and, and you know, and reality on, on this piece is fantastic. It's, you know, the way that the, not just the way that the colors blend, but the way that the mediums are, you know, interacting with each other is this classic uh, watercolor. I'm surprised. It's it's actually really hard to make that work on a canvas, which is a gessoed canvas and not a watercolor canvas. So this is a very skilled artist here. Oh, absolutely. It's really like just the, the layering technique um, and I'm the super subtle this. approaches. This, this, this classic uh, finger finger tapping to create, you know, reeds in the foreground. That's, this is not his first uh, rodeo. Oh. Gorgeous. And oh, wow. uh, Dan Zach actually owns a gallery um, in Salt Spring Island where he shows his own work. Mm -hmm. Cool. So if I ever make it out that way, I want to see more of this. Definitely. Just so subtle, just tiny, tiny little tapping movements. Mm -hmm. And it really adds up, though. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and going back for different colors and oh looks there we go we gotta get some red in there for some for some uh you know high highlights uh wow i don't think i've ever seen that technique used in such a a subtle like sparing way i yes. really appreciate the right. refinement there we got artists that come at it with a huge brush and like a whack over an arm. Yeah. And this is the, the tiniest brush in the arsenal. Oh, wow. Look at this. Here I am saying <laughs> she's, gonna be, she's not going to be able to do anything with that black. But 
wow, really brought the I, I we haven't I we haven't seen it. I think it's always been off camera, but I I'm I'm this is yelling palette knife to me. <laughs> Absolutely. I think so too. And I think uh both of us were proved wrong by Julie uh with the elements that yeah. are added into this background just making it that much more dynamic. I think both of us thought yeah. that that was going to be a real challenge. Yes, I, she's she's fantastic. We were we were wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And we are soon approaching the five minute mark. So if you are out there in the internets and you want to help us choose which of these artists should move on to the third and final round, head on over to artbattle.com slash vote, register to vote, and pick your favorite artist. The top two from this round will move into a third and final round uh, where they'll compete against the top two from the second round. So. Yes. Uh, so two more fantastic rounds of painting tonight. And of course, the auction. Uh, these paintings are uh, beautiful and we will uh, easily and quickly ship them to you um, across the country. We've got um, a fixed rate shipping. Um, and so don't hesitate if you're trapped at home and you're uh, enjoying this and enjoying a little bit of entertainment. Uh, show some support for the art, these artists in the auction. I am tempted by Jessica's piece. I got to tell you. Yes, we'll have to take a look. <laughs> I'm going to look right now. Actually, we'll tell you how much that's at and who can afford that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a great kind of entry point um, into being able to collect as well. Jessica's uh, has no bids, but I am going to bid myself right now, Morgan, on our mutual behalf. Uh, we, can, we can fight over it later. <laughs> we, that's happened to us a couple of times. And somehow you times. always end up with the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just holding on to them for you. <laughs> I'm bidding $60. There we go. Bid recorded. Okay. Look at this cute little cabin that uh, Chris has going. It is cute, although it, it's about ten percent like, um, you know, horror movie vibes. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what your definition of cute is. <laughs> yes, and like, yeah, look how exactly. sweet and ominous it is. Sweet and ominous, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we see the votes are starting uh, to come in, so uh, don't hesitate. You know, if you know already, but of course, if you want to wait and see the final p picture, uh, that is well within your rights. Uh, we've got you've got a good uh, uh, ten or fifteen minutes to vote for these. Simon, look at the tiny little birds that Dan just uh, just so carefully placed. Oh wow! Well, I think that we'll get an really opportunity something. to see that again. Just uh, these super, super subtle uh, brush strokes. And I saw him actually split the end of that brush that he no. used. Yeah, he he just like took it apart a little bit to kind of create two separate little prongs to make the wings of the bird. And this is fantastic. And I don't think I've seen that before. I've always wondered. This makes me I've got this great watercolor brush uh, where I am, where I am today, and it hasn't been used, and it really makes me want to pull it out and do Ooh. that exactly. Take a little, you know, a little metal uh, blade or whatever, and pull it apart. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's so fun. One of the fun things about art battle is that it's actually pretty educational too. Absolutely, uh, you know. That we, in fact, we've had many people who, who started by watching at our paddle events and taking notes, and then they came back and stepped to the easel, and they did all right. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you're wa if you're watching at home, uh, know that that is very much a possibility. And if you want to register to paint, uh, you can also do that right now. Yeah, and that's artpaddle.com uh... slash artists. In fact, if you could just skip right to artpaddle.com slash apply. And you can see what events are coming up near you and if, if you want to get in on any of those. Mm -hmm. If your uh, fingers are itching for the brush as much as Simon's are right now. I'm, I'm going at the break. I'm going to get the brush so I can hold it and I can, you know, be inspired. Nice. We're getting that. Uh, we're getting the, the tape satisfaction uh, and visual ASMR from Dan and you're holding the brush at the same time. I like it. Oh, we, speaking of which, did he take a we must be how, how much time do we have left uh we have a minute and 20 seconds left 
Okay, and we see one artist is done here. She's, uh, you know, uh, looking to the audience, uh, telling everybody it's done. That is a beautiful painting. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Um, I'm very happy that I am winning on that painting right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope that we uh, get a chance to pan over to Dan in that gorgeous tape pull. Oh, there we there go. We Wishes no, do come true. Dan, no. ah, <laughs> stay, stay. Oh, well, you know, we caught the edge of it. There oh, we go. That's so oh, that's crispy. Yeah, that's going to be something. This is good. I like what's coming to the foreground here. I don't think it's going to stand up against the other two landscapes, though. Uh, I think we. Oh, Simon, stopped. check it that it's gold. Oh, my God. Look at that piece. Yeah, that's gorgeous. But with yeah. that, yeah, love the super satisfying tape pull from Dan, but Chris pulled it out with that a reflective gold paint at the end that I didn't didn't mm -hmm. expect. And and you see it in the window. I think I guess representing candlelight perhaps in the window of the cabin. Nice. Is the same gold. Nice. That is nice. Really good work there. Okay, and we have just finished our round. Okay, round one is done. That means it's time to vote. Uh, the artists have uh, put their put themselves out there. They are sharing their very best. And now you have the difficult job of helping us choose the winner. Head over to artbattle.com, click on the uh, live stream uh, button, uh, and uh, you can get right in there and help us vote. And I have to say, I really enjoyed this round. Uh, I liked our singular, super vibrant piece with Julie. Um, but I also really enjoyed just how subtle the three landscapes are. Usually art battle is very, uh, there's a lot of loud painters, yes. like visually loud. Um, and so I think we got taken on kind of a more subtle journey and that was really fun to watch up close. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um, so uh, the the round two uh, folks have their work cut out for them uh, because any of these painters would be very difficult to face in the final round, which will, of course, come up after that. Uh, so I guess uh, we will leave it there for now. Uh, we're going to do a replay. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're going to do a replay of uh, round one so that you can uh, watch it uh, as we prepare and swap out the easels and get ready to go for round two. Awesome. We will be right back. Down from 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's pay. And we are off to starting round number one for Art Battle Victoria tonight. Uh, so welcome to everyone who's watching out in the internets with us. My name is Morgan Booth, uh, and I am here with Art Battle co-founder Simon Plashkis. Hello, hello. Very and happy we, to be here. And we're your, co we're your commentators for tonight. Yeah, well, you know, we're uh, we're bringing it to you. Not everybody can be there. We have a very limited audience on account of this whole continued COVID situation. Um, but the, through the magic of the internet, we all get to uh, we all get to join and watch. So thank you for joining us, all you folks on PBM TV and on Facebook uh, and on YouTube and I think even a couple of other spots. But those are the biggies. Um, and so thank you for being here. We're going to see some great art tonight. Yeah, 19 minutes on the clock, uh, 20 minutes total for these artists to go from blank canvas to awesome masterpiece. You guys are going to vote at artbattle.com slash vote uh, for the best painters tonight. Yeah, you can register to vote even right now. Uh, hop up there. Uh, uh, you throw in your phone number, you get a special voting link and you can vote, you can bid. Uh, we will ship these paintings and we will ship them uh, in Canada and internationally. All right, Morgan, what do we see here? We got we got uh, one of our artists is uh, on the ground. That's always an interesting technique. I believe that this is Dan Zach and we've got some uh, good compartmentalization going on with uh, some painter's tape already. I love it when the painter's tape comes out. It leaves such 
you know, even if you just put a, a bunch of, you know, random mishmash on there, when you peel that tape off, you get those perfect clean lines and it's such an attractive piece. And if, you know, even, even better, if you're a good painter, uh, you can have an even better result. Absolutely. It always the, the last minute tape pulling always gives my brain tingles. Totally. It's, it's like that visual ASMR stuff. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. It, 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 like how clean is that line? Is it super clean? Is it the <laughs> tiny little bit that bleed under? So satisfyingly crispy. It is. It is exactly. Uh, what do we got here? Is this uh, this is a bird of some kind? Uh, uh, I'm I sure. believe that that is Julie Gagne at uh, easel number one. And yes, I think that you're right. I think we've got a a plumed bird, a bright yellow plumed bird. Is is this artist known for her for her uh, avian uh, uh, plumage? She is known for her avian plumage. Actually, um, I was just creeping her Instagram earlier today. And I uh, saw a similar bird rocking the uh, the feathered mohawk there. Fantastic. I love it. And I see here this artist uh, is uh, Jessica. I can't quite read her last name. Jessica, I love this palette. The, the subtle, the slight shading difference between the sort of the, 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 the rough shapes that she's got on there already is fantastic. Absolutely. And Jessica was actually a 2019 city finalist for Victoria. Ooh. So we can definitely expect a gorgeous piece from her. Great, great. Ooh, and we're headed. Are we hanging out with Chris now? Looks like we're hanging out with Chris. Yeah, Chris Casson. This is a, I love a good dry brush technique. You, you get, uh, you get something really special. Um, and I think we're seeing clouds here. Cloud, clouds and dry brush can be very, very good friends. Oh, yeah. You get that beautiful kind of soft, soft blending uh, mm -hmm. with the dry brush, especially in those clouds. And this is a bit of a lighter palette than I think that we're used to seeing from Chris. Mm -hmm. um, usually well, you never he's know where you go from here. Yes, that's true. Yeah, the the dry brush, especially if a lot of a lot of artists have you know have have their arsenal of of brushes. Um, but one of the things I love about a dry brush is it preserves the potential to use the same brush throughout the entire painting, and that always really blows me away from a talent perspective. Mm -hmm. As long as you're wiping it off and getting all of that excess off, you can just keep carrying that. Ooh, check yeah, out well, I mean, Dan. You go, you go wetter and wetter. Yeah. So yes. we've got on the complete opposite spectrum. So with Chris, we've got really dry brush technique. And then Dan, we've got this like gorgeous watercolor application. Um, and I'm just, I'm living for this. Yeah, fantastic. The, um, oh, and already we have some, Ooh. we have the uh, tape coming I don't think off. we were going to get that satisfaction though. No, early. <laughs> there you go. I hope you guys are ready for that. That was special. Great. Yeah. Uh, definitely I'm feeling a landscape coming alive there. Yeah. And now we've got that kind of super crisp uh, horizon line. Yeah. Okay. And back to hang out with Julie. Oh, this bird is going to be fantastic. Yeah. I'm liking the uh, way that she's layered these colors here. She's got the cerulean over that bright primary yellow, and it's mixing a little bit into some green tones, but we're still getting the vibrancy of each color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And some really interesting, like, fluid movement here. Oh, and now we're getting a, a dark background to kind of contrast the vibrancy of this bird. I'm really happy there's a background coming in. I, I didn't want to start talking about backgrounds because we're only, you know, whatever, 15, you know, five minutes in. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a very dark background. So it'll be interesting to see. Interesting. I mean, she's a lot of time left. So it'd be interesting to see where she goes from there because, of course, you can't really do much on top of that black. Oh, and check out what Jessica's got going on. I'm really loving these uh, drips that she's just Drip. allowing to cascade throughout. Uh, what I'm getting the vibe of is a mountainous landscape. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think I, absolutely. Uh, but of course, it's it's a very clearly a landscape painting. Uh, you know, it's it's very uh, painterly, as they say, because it's it's clear that because of the drips, this is this is calling to us and saying this is essentially a, almost a painting of a painting um, of of a mountainscape, and so that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And Julie, uh, or sorry, Jessica, um, has 
described her painting process and what she loves the most is to start with kind of a, a super gestural paint sketch um, and mm. allow the paint to work its own magic um, as well as herself directing it. That's so cool. It's like yeah, there's two loose. painters. She He's painting and also the, you know, the medium itself is having its own effect. Mm hmm. And I think that can also be said uh, for Dan when we pan over to him with his watercolor piece. Um, but for now, we've got Chris with this really, really subtle color palette. Um, and I think that this is a almost fully landscape round with uh, just with Julie and the bird and the rest looks like landscape. Well, that bodes well for Julie. Um, but uh, these are some very strong contenders, um, Jessica and... Uh... Uh, uh, Chris here. Is this Chris? Yes. And yeah, I'm really, in, is... I'm, I'm so into this, the subtlety here. Yeah. I wonder if there's going to be any sort of high, you know, darker highlights that come off on the, uh, the top. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not looking for that. Um, it is a, it's a beautiful, but it's hard for the audience, the in-person audience to appreciate it from that distance back without it, I think. Yeah. It, uh, seeing whether or not he's going to add contrast into that because it is a really beautiful subtle piece um but that's a great point in terms of battle strategy and considering the audience you have to think of the piece functioning as its own work of art but also as a performance piece and is it going to be uh translated to the audience in the room because it might be too subtle yeah usually of course um art battle is in the round and the audience moves around but um what what we're doing here in victoria is an accommodation for the uh, local covid restrictions we have actually a seated audience which is very unusual for us um, but it's an interesting experiment but of course the audience sort of has to um you know look around uh, the painters as they're moving mm -hmm. uh, so the, there's a bit more of a reveal and uh, uh, at the end it has kind of the feel of a bit of a um an airport uh, art auction, you know, like a seized art goods. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll see how how they how they like it at the end here. Yeah, and I think it'll probably create a lot of good opportunity for kind of in depth conversations mm -hmm. uh, between the people that are are sitting and having an opportunity to really talk about their observations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm liking this bird more and more. The hair, uh, I mean, feathers, I guess, on the top here, that just, this is a beautiful, like, a abstract, but yet sort of, you know, it shows a lot of movement, even though the, 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 you feel the bird is, is holding still. So you get, like, a, sort of the, the bit of the feather, the feathers um, quivering in the wind almost from the movement uh, uh, from, from the brush application. Oh, totally. Great point. Yeah, I think that uh, when she added that texture, it, like, it definitely created that kind of that curl, that movement. Um, yeah, was that so... a palette knife? Is that a palette knife or, or a brush? I see some, you know, some really um, sort of defined um, uh, structure and shape, almost texture there. Mm -hmm. I think that we're getting brush now, but it might have been knife mm -hmm. in uh, in that plumage earlier. So I was a little bit worried that she had too much done in a short amount of time, but I can tell with the way that she's working now that she's going into more of a refinement yeah, exactly. space. Working in the eyes mm -hmm. and the and the details of the animal. Yeah. And here we're back with Jessica. And Jessica is a painter's painter. I can yeah. I can just tell you I'm loving the like sumptuousness of the way that she's allowing these colors to blend into each other. Um and yeah. a palette that's very tonal, that's very close to each other. And the and the lights and darks are fantastic you know you really you really get this sense of the of the atmosphere uh being in play here totally and the the way that she's got these drips going as well like when the piece is finished you're always going to think of it being created if that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly you have it on your wall and and you know that this was you know this was a painting that was made it was not printed off the internet yeah, and with those drips, you're still getting that sense of movement. So you're getting, like, it's a static object when it's dry, but it's still giving you that sense of immediacy. Mm -hmm. And we have a bit of that here in Chris's piece as well. It's um, that's cool. We, I think we have a structure there. There's a bit of a building off in the distance. Uh, and now we're going to get some foreground pieces that come in. 
Yeah, and I'm glad that we're getting um, some of that contrast that we were craving mm-hmm. and that I'm sure the audience um, is now getting an opportunity to really appreciate. Oh, my God. This watercolor feel and, and you know, and reality on, on this piece is fantastic. It's, you know, the way that the, not just the way that the colors blend, but the way that the mediums are, you know, interacting with each other is this classic uh, watercolor. I'm surprised. It's, it's actually really hard to make that work on a canvas, which is a gessoed canvas and not a watercolor canvas. So this is a very skilled artist here. Oh, absolutely. It's really like just the, the layering technique. Um, and the super subtle this. approaches. This, is this, this classic uh, finger finger tapping to create, you know, reeds in the foreground. That's, this is not his first uh, rodeo. Oh, gorgeous. And oh, yeah. uh, Dan Zach actually owns a gallery um, in Salt Spring Island where he shows his own work. Mm-hmm. Cool. So if I ever make it out that way, I want to see more of this. Definitely. Just so subtle, just tiny, tiny little tapping movements. Mm-hmm. And it really adds up, though. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and going back for different colors and, oh, look, there we go. We got to get some red in there for some, for some, uh, you know, high, highlights. Uh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen that technique used in such a, a subtle, like sparing way. Yes. I really appreciate the right. refinement there. We get artists that come at it with a huge brush and like a whack over an arm. Yeah. And this is the, the tiniest brush in the arsenal. Oh, wow. Look at this. Here I am saying she's <laughs> gonna be, not going to be able to do anything with that black. But wow, really brought the I, I we haven't I, we haven't seen it. I think it's always been off camera. But I, I'm I'm this is yelling palette knife to me. <laughs> Absolutely. I think so, too. And I think uh, both of us were proved wrong by Julie uh, with the elements that yeah. are added into this background, just making it that much more dynamic. I think both of us thought yeah. that that was going to be a real challenge. Yes. I, she's, she's fantastic. We were, we were wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And we are soon approaching the five minute mark. So if you are out there in the internets and you want to help us choose which of these artists should move on to the third and final round, Head on over to artbattle.com slash vote, register to vote, and pick your favorite artist. The top two from this round will move into a third and final round uh, where they'll compete against the top two from the second round. So, Yes, uh, so two more fantastic rounds of painting tonight. And of course, the auction. Uh, these paintings are uh, beautiful, and we will uh, easily and quickly ship them to you um, across the country. We've got um, a fixed rate shipping. Um, and so don't hesitate if you're trapped at home and you're, uh, enjoying this and enjoying a little bit of entertainment, uh, show some support for the art, these artists in the auction. I am tempted by Jessica's piece. I got to tell you. <laughs> yes. You have to take a look. <laughs> I'm going to look right now. Actually, we'll tell you how much that's at and who can afford that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a great kind of entry point, um, into being able to collect as well. Jessica's uh, has no bids, but I am going to bid myself right now, Morgan, on our mutual behalf. Uh, we, can, we can fight over it later. <laughs> we, that's happened to us a couple of times. And somehow you always times. end up with the pieces. <laughs> I'm just holding on to them for you. <laughs> I'm bidding $60. There we go. Bid recorded. Okay. Look at this cute little cabin that uh, Chris has going. It is cute, although it, it's about ten percent like, um, you know, horror movie vibes. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what your definition of cute is. <laughs> yes, and like, yeah, look how exactly. sweet and ominous it is. Sweet and ominous. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, we see the votes are starting uh, to come in, so uh, don't hesitate. You know, if you know already, but of course, if you want to wait and see the final picture, uh, that is well within your rights. Uh, we've got, you've got a good uh, 10 or 15 minutes to vote for these. Simon, look at the tiny little birds that Dan just, uh, just so carefully placed. Oh, wow. Well, I think that we'll get an really opportunity something. to see that again. Just uh, these super, super subtle 
uh, brush strokes and I saw him actually split the end of that brush that he no. used. Yeah, he he just like took it apart a little bit to kind of create two separate little prongs to make the wings of the bird. And this is fantastic. I don't think I've seen that before. I've always wondered. This makes me... I've got this great watercolor brush uh, where I am, where I am today, and it hasn't been used, and it really makes me want to pull it out and do Ooh. that exactly. Take a little, you know, a little metal uh, blade or whatever and pull it apart. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's so fun. One of the fun things about Art Battle is that it's actually pretty educational too. Absolutely, uh, you know, the, we in fact we've had many people who who started by watching at our paddle events and taking notes, and then they came back and stepped to the easel, and they did all right. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you're if you're watching at home, uh, know that that is very much a possibility. And if you are, want to register to paint, uh, you can also do that right now. Yeah, and that's artpaddle.com uh... slash artists. In fact, if you could just skip right to artpaddle.com slash apply. And you can see what events are coming up near you and if, if you want to get in on any of those. Mm -hmm. If your uh, fingers are itching for the brush as much as Simon's are right now. I'm, I'm going at the break. I'm going to get the brush so I can hold it and I can, you know, be inspired. Nice. We're getting that. Uh, we're getting the, the tape satisfaction uh, and visual ASMR from Dan and you're holding the brush at the same time. I like it. Oh, we, speaking of which, did he take a we must be how, how much time do we have left uh we have a minute and 20 seconds left okay and we see one artist is done here she's uh you know uh, looking to the audience uh telling everybody it's done that is a beautiful painting yeah that's gorgeous um, i'm very happy that i am winning on that painting right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i hope that we uh get a chance to pan over to dan in that gorgeous tape pull Oh, there we there go. We Wishes no, to come true. No, no. ah. <laughs> stay, stay. Oh, well, you know, we caught the edge of it. There oh, we go. That's so oh, that's crispy. Yeah, that's going to be something. This is good. I like what's coming to the foreground here. I don't think it's going to stand up against the other two landscapes, though. Uh, I think we. Oh, Simon, stop. check it that it's gold. Oh, my God. Look at that piece. Yeah, that's gorgeous. But with yeah. that, yeah, love the super satisfying tape pull from Dan, but Chris pulled it out with that, a reflective gold paint at the end that I didn't didn't mm. expect. And and you see it in the window, I think, I guess, representing candlelight, perhaps, in the window of the cabin. Nice. It's the same gold. Nice. That is nice. Really good work there. Okay. And we have just finished our round. Okay. Round one. I love it when the painter's tape comes out. It leaves such, you know, even if you just put a, a bunch of, you know, random mishmash on there, when you peel that tape off, you get those perfect clean lines and it's such an attractive piece. And if, you know, even, even better, if you're a good painter, uh, you can have an even better result. Absolutely. It always the, the last minute tape pulling always gives my brain tingles. Totally. It's it's like that visual ASMR stuff. Exactly, sure. exactly. It, 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 like, how clean is that line? Is it super clean? Is it the <laughs> tiny little bit that bleed under? So satisfyingly crispy. It is, it is, exactly. Uh, what do we got here? Is this, uh, this is a bird of some kind? Uh, I'm I sure. believe that that is Julie Gagne at uh, easel number one. And yes, I think that you're right. I think we've got a... A plumed bird, a bright yellow plumed bird. Is is this artist known for her for her uh, avian uh, uh, plumage? She is known for her avian plumage, actually. Um, I was just creeping her Instagram earlier today and uh, saw a similar bird rocking the uh, the feathered mohawk there. Fantastic! I love it. And I see here this artist uh, is uh, Jessica. Can't quite read her last name, Jessica. I love this palette. The the subtle, the slight shading difference between the sort of the the the, the rough shapes that she's got on there already is fantastic. Absolutely. And Jessica was actually a 2019 city finalist for Victoria, Ooh. so we can definitely expect a gorgeous piece from her. 
Right, great. Ooh, and we're headed. Are we hanging out with Chris now? Looks like we're hanging out with Chris. Yeah, Chris Casson. This is a. I love a good dry brush technique. You you get uh, you get something really special. Um, and I think we're seeing clouds here. Cloud clouds and dry brush can be very very good friends. Oh yeah, you get that beautiful kind of soft soft blending uh, mm -hmm. with the dry brush, especially in those clouds. And this is a bit of a lighter palette than I think that we're used to seeing from Chris. Mm -hmm. um, usually well, you never he's know where you go from here. Yes, that's true. Yeah, the the dry brush, especially if a lot of a lot of artists have you know have have their arsenal of of brushes. Um, but one of the things I love about a dry brush is it preserves the potential to use the same brush throughout the entire painting, and that always really blows me away from a talent perspective. Mm -hmm. As long as you're wiping it off and getting all of that excess off, you can just keep carrying that. Ooh, check yeah, out well, I mean, Dan. You go, you go wetter and wetter. Yeah. So yes. we've got on the complete opposite spectrum. So with Chris, we've got really dry brush technique. And then Dan, we've got this like gorgeous watercolor application. Um, and I'm just, I'm living for this. Yeah, fantastic. The, um, oh, and already we have some, Ooh. we have the uh, tape coming I didn't think off. we Ooh. were going to get that satisfaction though. No, early. <laughs> there you go. I hope you guys are ready for that. That was special. Great. Yeah. Uh, definitely I'm feeling a landscape coming alive there. Yeah. And now we've got that kind of super crisp uh, horizon line. Yeah. Okay. And back to hang out with Julie. Oh, this bird is going to be fantastic. Yeah. I'm liking the uh, way that she's layered these colors here. She's got the cerulean over that bright primary yellow, and it's mixing a little bit into some green tones, but we're still getting the vibrancy of each color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And some really interesting, like, fluid movement here. Oh, and now we're getting a, a dark background to kind of contrast the vibrancy of this bird. I'm really happy there's a background coming in. I, I didn't want to start talking about backgrounds because we're only, you know, whatever, 15, you know, five minutes in. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a very dark background. So it'll be interesting to see. Interesting. I mean, she's a lot of time left. It'd be interesting to see where she goes from there because, of course, you can't really do much on top of that black. Oh, and check out what Jessica's got going on. I'm really loving these uh, drips that she's just yeah. allowing to cascade throughout. Uh, what I'm getting the vibe of is a mountainous landscape. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think I, absolutely. Uh, but of course, it's it's a very clearly a landscape painting. Uh, you know, it's it's very uh, painterly, as they say, because it's it's clear that because of the drips, this is this is calling to us and saying this is essentially a, almost a painting of a painting. Um, of, of a mountainscape and so that's really cool yeah absolutely and julie uh or sorry jessica um has described her painting process and what she loves the most is to start with kind of a, a super gestural paint sketch um mm. and allow the paint to work its own magic um as well as herself direct Okay, welcome back. All right. Here we are. Sorry, I had a little sound issue there. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with the famous Chris Pemberton, our battle co founder. Uh, and my name is Morgan Booth, and we will be your co-commentators for the second round of our Battle of Victoria tonight. Hi, Chris. Hi, Morgan. Thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we're going to some great painting here. Oh, yeah. I think that we're going to have a really nice uh, round two. Round one was re there was some really beautiful work there. Yeah, it looked really fantastic. The voting is going to be really close for that round. Mm hmm. Just going to check in quickly with the venue here. Looks like they're getting ready. Okay. See all of our, uh, all of our four artists up their easels already. I believe that our MC is starting to get ready. 
uh, to begin making announcements. But for now, let's uh, let me tell you who we have. Um, at easel number one, we have Eve Daigle. And at easel number two, we have Nina Parada. At easel three, Corey Hall. And easel four, Catherine Latour. All right, some uh, art battle veterans. In oh, there. yeah. Yeah, Corey's uh, been doing art battle since 2018, and uh, Catherine, 2016. Yeah, so she's been in a few times. Interesting to see if she does something similar to what she's done before, or if she mixes it up. Mm-hmm. Just checking in. Ah, here we are. Okay, Chris, and I think that you can switch your feed. Okay, great. We're on. All right. This competitor is known for making psych psychedelic patterns that inspire deeper connections. And I quote, my artwork is focused on expressing passionate, untamed emotion. The goal is to inspire deeper connections to the natural world, to address social issues, and to change in healthy ways. <laughs> Somebody give Eva Grant with paragraphs like that. That's amazing. Being art, Eva is also passionate about cooking, experimenting. All right, we have uh, with ingredients and DJ baking. Rich Nines there. Using he is introducing the marker, funky fantasy artwork painters. to fuel the soul. Give for this round. Give it up for Eve. And at easel number two, battling since February 2020, it's Nina Parota. This multidisciplinary artist enjoys painting, photography, and sculpture. And I quote, I love to challenge by focusing on texture and color. Yes, prepare to be challenged by Nina. And at easel number three, you may remember Corey from such paintings as tonight's introductory painting. Yes. No stranger to art battle. Corey has been battling since 2018. This painter rules the world of busy landscapes. He describes his portfolio as a combination of fantasy landscapes and random ideas. Corey is a self-taught artist who favors landscapes, pop culture portraits, and naturalistic animals. He is highly skilled at depicting detailed naturalistic scenes, and his use of light, cloud, and greenery creates scenes that are breathtaking, familiar, and fantastical all at once. Wow. And last but not least, it's Catherine Latour. No stranger to art battle, she has been battling for years. She has provided no biography and simply wants you to know that she was not happy with the painting she did last time at art battle. <laughs> Fear the painter scorned. Redemption is a hell of a motivator. Other painters, watch out. It's comeback time for Catherine Latour. <laughs> and there you have it. These are our four painters for round two. Painters, are you ready? They're looking hella ready. Audience, are we ready? <laughs> then we are ready. I'm gonna set the counter. 20 minutes is all they have to make magic in front of our very eyes, and we're gonna count it down from. And we are off. All right, here we go. 20 minutes of exciting live painting, live from the Victoria Event Center in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Woo. Um, and looks like we have some really strong painters uh, hanging out with us tonight as well. Definitely some art battle vets. I loved uh, the way our announcer was talking uh, about Catherine's bio, that she provided no bio. She just wanted the audience to know that she's here for redemption. <laughs> <laughs> I've felt that many a time at art battle. I understand. That's great. Catherine's been in a uh, few art battles, so I guess that she uh, uh, is looking to settle a score with herself 
from the last time she painted. Oh, man, that's going to be so satisfying. I have faith in you, Catherine. Yeah, for sure. We are uh, underway here. The artists are on stage with the audience seated cabaret style, which is unusual for Art Battle, but uh, necessary because of COVID restrictions. Uh, so a different way to view it here on the live stream looks pretty much the same, though. We get an up close view of these painters as they work their magic. And I think that that will, so it provides a unique challenge, but it also provides a unique opportunity um, for these artists to go maybe a little bit bolder, a little bit more vibrant. Um, and just checking out what Corey um, and Nina have going on, I think that they're going for that high contrast, high vibrancy uh, vibe. Yeah, I think that they are. I think that they are. We're uh, watching Corey right now. And uh, he is um, starting s starting slowly here. He's got he's got some vibrant colors on there, some drips. Yeah, and, very uh, very leisurely. I like he's got one hand on his hip. You know, I like the confidence. I think bringing a little bit of swagger to the easel. Yeah, and here we have uh, Catherine out for redemption. She is. Uh, Painting some circles, some colorful circles on the canvas. She's got, uh, she's got some. Looks like is that magenta or red? Hard to tell in this light. Mm -hmm. And interesting approach because I would think that these kind of polka dots would be added as a finishing element, but we're starting with it. I guess she's going to build around them. Maybe we're going to see some uh, some swirls coming out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's that's normally a finishing touch. So, uh, but she's definitely got a plan here. Always um, interesting to try and guess whether a painter has practiced their painting before coming to Art Battle or whether they are doing it for the first time live. Uh, artists take different approaches. Some artists practice their painting many times, uh, and some artists prefer just to feel it in the moment. Yeah, I think that Catherine is one of those artists that goes for the intuitive. Um, from just from reading her bio and uh, her talking about kind of approaching things with more of a doodling, uh, like intuitive approach. But knowing she's here for redemption. Did she come with a game plan? Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to find out uh, what kind of uh, style she's bringing to the easel as we um, come through here. Mm -hmm. Look like Eve is looks like Eve is painting a uh, that looked like the background for a bird. There, we saw a bird in the first round. Yeah, and at that same easel too. At that same easel, that's right. So it'll be a bird battle. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm really enjoying what Nina's got going on. Uh, she's got kind of these uh, collisions of color uh, starting to blend into each other. Um, and Nina, in her bio, was describing how she really likes to um, challenge viewers with texture. Uh, so I think that we're starting to see some of that in her piece as well. Yeah, she's got a lot of coverage. She's covered the whole canvas already, and she's... Uh... Uh, building up from there. We see uh, Corey here still working on the middle with the same brush that he was using the last time we were around here. Yep, he's still got, hand on uh, the hip. Still hand on his hip. <laughs> uh, he's got what looks like maybe a flesh tone there. He could be he could be building out a body. I think uh, you're right. I wasn't sure what it was just until that uh, that one kind of curving stroke that was indicating that torso there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing from Corey is the uh, torso of a woman and maybe maybe the uh, chest and the hips. There's Catherine. She's still bringing the circles. She's uh, got many different colors going on there, different sizes, and uh, is oh. fur furiously mixing her paints. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I didn't expect that. That's cool. That's a nice move. And really a little bit of, uh, energetic, too. Fun strokes with that. Yeah. That's a crowd pleaser for sure. And that's a real uh, 
a real change up there. So now we see the way that she was going. We thought those were finishing strokes the way they're complete. Uh, but um, she's definitely, she's starting with them uh, early on as her base and she's smudging them out with a little dry brush technique. Yeah, very performative, um, the way this was done. She was making those polka dots so, so perfect, so circular. And then we're getting these aggressive strokes that are bringing them uh, into each other and into the background. And I think that'll be really fun uh, for the crowd to enjoy. That's right. We're getting back here to uh, Eve and is working. This could be a phoenix rising from the ashes. I'm um, into it could be and she is going to the floor just for Camera a single stroke <laughs> just just for a single stroke just for emphasis there we go um and our voting correspondent gina uh is saying that she thinks that this bird is more aggressive than the first bird little uh, little definitely. less friendly vibes <laughs> Definitely, uh, she's got the she's got the talons up and the uh, the wings up here too. So, what we're not seeing a uh, patient uh, pheasant or whatever that bird was in the first round, we're seeing something definitely with a lot more um, anger, I'd say. And interesting technique as well that uh, bringing that kind of performative aspect. Um, by turning and turning and turning the canvas. Um, so I think that Eve is, I think that she's working on this piece for herself, but I also think that it's really playing uh, to the crowd. Yeah, a lot of action there. Love to see an artist really get into their work and their materials. Uh, the crowd loves to see that too. Absolutely. Oh, we have... We have some uh, some foreground figures from uh, Nina. Yeah, I think that we're getting some kind of trees rising from almost like a fiery sunset. Look how fast her brush is moving in there. And how close her hair is to the canvas. Like, <laughs> are we gonna get uh, are we gonna get some body involvement? Is she gonna start painting with those pigtails? I don't know. Anything could happen. <laughs> Uh, we've seen artists get paint uh, pretty much everywhere, including in their hair in our battle. Before, <laughs> I know so. that I have. <laughs> it won't be a surprise. <laughs> Just a little bit harder for the audience to uh, see the paintings being worked on with this uh, stage format. Uh, as you said before, the artists are usually in the center of the room, as most uh uh, experienced art battle fans know, but uh, we have them on stage here because of uh, COVID protocols and the audience uh, has to kind of view around the bodies of the painters, but uh, doing the best we can and they're, they're definitely putting on a great show here in Victoria. Absolutely. And that being said, we are approaching the 10 minute mark. Um, so just about halfway through this round. And you, the audience out in the internets, gets to help us choose the top two artists from this round to move on to the third and final, which will determine the winner of the night. So head on over to artbattle.com slash vote and register. Choose your favorite artists, support these guys, uh, and all of the works created tonight are also up for uh, bidding in a silent auction, and we will ship them to you. That's right. If you see something that you like here, Take it home, and uh, you'll have a great story to tell, uh, as you saw the piece uh, created. Just a very unique experience to uh, add to or to start a collection. And speaking of unique experience, uh, Catherine, this is such an uh, unexpected approach, and I really am so into the way that she's like created these different stages of this painting. Like, how would you think that we would get here from uh, from the polka dots that we had only nine minutes ago? And it looks yeah. to me like she's starting to transition into a landscape. I think we're going to get a satisfying flip soon. What do you think? Uh, definitely, uh, That's a good call, Morgan. I think that we might see a flip. 
those polka dots from before have almost completely disappeared. I wonder if she changed her mind. Yeah, did she change her mind or is she just really involving us in this kind of interesting uh, approach to the way that she's doing her painting? Is it, it almost feels like an in-joke. Yeah, it would be really great to see a uh, stop motion. If we could have the, uh, if we had a stop motion on every painting. Uh, some of them definitely go through many different phases and are indeed many different paintings on the way to the end of the 20 minutes. So uh, that would be very interesting if we could see that. Yeah, I think we get a lot of unexpected twists and turns. Um, and Eve here refining her Griffin Phoenix mystical bird. Uh, I think that you're right, though, Phoenix. I'm definitely getting that with uh, with this use of warm collar here. Yeah, definitely. And she's uh, she's left herself a lot of uh, background to fill in here. I think we're going to see that filled in by the end of this uh, painting. Uh, I think that uh, she's going to keep working on the body here, and then when we get closer to the end, fill in the background. But... You never know. You never know. Uh, definitely some trees in the foreground for Nina here. She's got uh, four trees in there and uh, is working now with a, f a light touch with the finger, smudging some of her paint. I think the only next natural step has to be the pigtails, right? Definitely going to be the pigtails for sure. <laughs> I like that. They, uh, I think that by using her finger, she's able to tap it in such a way that she's getting that opacity from the white. Whereas I think if she was using a brush, that it might blend too much. Yeah. Definitely um, an experienced move to know how to get solid colors over top of other solid colors in, in wet paint. And we're here with Corey now. Um, and it looks like he's just kind of carving out and refining the shape around this torso. Yeah. I wonder if this is a uh, portrait of Kim Kardashian on vacation. <laughs> I think that's the winning comment of the night. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> you know we all get our inspiration from uh, different places so. <laughs> I think that's a good call <sighs> and uh, def definitely a, definitely looking like a landscape here from Catherine which she is working on at a 90 degree angle to the uh, to the true sh to the true angle of the image so uh, very interesting to see if we're going to see her do the whole thing this way, or is she going to do, as you say, the flip? Yeah, I think that we are in, I think that she has done this painting in all of these unexpected stages on purpose to kind of give us these thrills. Um, and I think that doing, approaching the landscape from, uh, this completely, uh, opposite angle is going to provide another one of those thrills for the audience. And I think that she's playing it really smart, um, especially given the way that this venue is set up. Um, she's creating a really good visual story from afar. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And she is using a variety. Of, well, that's a really neat tool that she's got there. That's yeah, almost that's a... Cool. Uh, I think that's a kitchen utensil. Yeah, maybe like a, a bench scraper, like a pastry scraper. Yeah, something like that. I know I uh, one of our artists in Toronto, Matt Wood, likes to, he uh, does drywall and he brings his full drywall kit with him I'll, and he uses his trowels. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I remember from uh, a long time ago, Toronto painter uh, Ginger, she used to use the uh, spatula. Yeah. And she um, went on to win Art Battle Los Angeles. So yeah, she's a she, really cool painter. Yeah, she put, she comes out with some uh, some great creations there, and uh, having painted in multiple, we've seen a, quite a few artists paint in multiple cities. That's one of the uh, benefits we have about being in so many different locations. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that Eve is doing exactly oh oh what's happening now that's uh that's kind of the surprise that you get i start to make a, a comment about one thing and then boom artist switch to another thing yeah here we go nina's still working on her trees they're looking pretty good there i think that uh she's painted in a crescent moon uh, and I think that Catherine has a moon in her painting too. It's a nice night for the moon. If you've seen it, it is a uh, waxing crescent tonight. Just beautifully. It's just set in about, uh, it's just set in the east. It's probably still up in the west. Yeah, I can't see it from where I'm at. I just see the reflection of my giant light bulb in my window. <laughs> But, ah, the moon is close to you. Yeah. Okay, and more uh, work just going into kind of the shadows of this torso. I like the red um, that was introduced on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, that's very striking. And... Uh creates a great uh, pop off the uh, the blue. Catherine, achieving that redemption, the way that she's used that tool um, to create these waves is just so interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, Going to be awesome when she turns it for a final presentation at the end. How much time do we have left? Uh, two minutes and 20 seconds. All right. So again, all of you out in the internet, if you haven't uh, gone on over to artbattle.com slash vote, that's where you can register to vote and support these artists. Uh, they are working hard for you right now, so make sure that you support them. Every vote counts. That's right, and uh, don't forget that you can also bid in the silent auction to take one of these pieces home. Or if you're voting from the internet, have it shipped to you. That's awesome. You just you fall in love with these pieces as they're being created. Um, and up until now, basically, the, the only opportunity for buyers has been people in the actual room. Um, and yeah. now we've just increased that accessibility. Yep, definitely. And we've seen uh, a lot of people from remote locations take advantage of that. And we've been shipping a lot of paintings recently. So hopefully that uh, continues and adds to the uh, size of the community. Rounding out on our Final minute here. These artists are just placing their final strokes. I'm starting to see a little bit of that that frantic energy, which I always love to see in the last minute. These uh, final thoughtful strokes. Yeah, definitely crunch time. When the uh, MC announces one minute left, you got to make a decision. Are you going to depart from the strategy that you've been using for 19 minutes or are you going to keep going through sometimes you see painters in a little bit of a uh, i won't say panic but they change their mind a little bit in the last minute and try and add in an extra detail or change it up or maybe that was their strategy all along to uh, as you usually say morgan to be a performance artist totally and it's just I think that the last minute is where the most risk risk happens. Are you going to ruin it with that new idea or is it going to all come together? <laughs> okay. And we're getting them counting down now. One. Brushes down painters. And a turn of Catherine's painting. Big round of applause for our round two artists. All right. Yes. Let's artists, hear it for these artists. Sign your work. So good. Your so artists, good. Sign your work. People are going to bid on it for auction. And oh, a beautiful piece from forever, Catherine. And they'll be worth millions of dollars. In nice nude from Amazing Corey. Work. Okay, 
You know the drill now. Get those and I like in. the uh, the we'll final introduction of movement um, in you that Phoenix one if you still from that, Eve. Get those votes in, and we'll be back yeah. with our final round as soon as we can. Ah, and we did see that Catherine turned her piece. She did turn her piece right as time went, right as the clock hit zero. Nice. What a nice finishing touch. All right, so now all of our qualifying artists have painted for the night. Uh, so the top two artists, as voted by the audience and you out in the internet uh, for round one and round two, will go on to the third and final round with four new canvases where one winner will emerge at the end of the night. And that winner will then move on to the Victoria City final. Very exciting, and of course, the winner of the Victoria City Finals will represent the city at the national championships, which will be held in Toronto in July. And then the winner of that will go on to the international championships. And then the winner of that will go on to the intergalactic championships. <laughs> they may, but they may have to. Uh, they may have to wait a few years for that one. <laughs> so good. So good. All right, and we will, it looks like our team is just uh, letting the votes roll in on their end, um, and they're going to take a few minutes to reset and get ready for the third and final round. So in the meantime, we're going to replay uh, some of this awesome painting action, and we will be right back with you in about 10 minutes. Great, stick around. That's so cool. It's like yeah, there's two loose. painters. She, he's painting, and also the you know the medium itself is having its own effect. Mm -hmm. Down from ten, nine. One of our artists is uh, on the ground TV and on Facebook, uh, and on YouTube, and I think even a down from ten, down from ten, nine. nine. And we've got some uh, good compartmentalization going on with uh, some. Painter's tape already. I love it when the painter's tape comes out. It leaves such, you know, even if you just put a, a bunch of, you know, random m m mishmash on there, when you peel that tape off, you get those perfect clean lines and it's such an attractive piece. Down from 10, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's paint. And we are off to similar to what she's done before if she mixes it up. Mm-hmm. Just checking in. Ah, here we are. Okay, Chris, and I think that you can switch your feed. Okay, great. We're on. All right. Competitor is known for making psychedelic patterns that inspire deeper connections. And I quote, my artwork is focused on expressing passionate, untamed emotion. The goal is to inspire deeper connections to the natural world, to address social issues, and to change in healthy ways. <laughs> Somebody give Eva Grant with paragraphs like that. That's amazing. Being art. Eva's also passionate about cooking, experimenting. All right, we have uh, DJ Rich Nines there. He e is introducing the marker. funky fantasy artwork to fuel the soul Give for this round. Give it up for Eve. And at easel number two, battling since February 2020, it's Nina Parota. This multidisciplinary artist enjoys 
aerospace, painting, photography, and sculpture. And I quote, I love to challenge by focusing on texture and color. Yes, prepare to be challenged by Nina. And at easel number three, you may remember Corey from such paintings as tonight's introductory painting. Yes, no strange. Stranger to art battle, Corey has been battling since 2018. This painter rules the world of busy landscapes. He describes his portfolio as a combination of fantasy landscapes and random ideas. Corey is a self-taught artist who favors landscapes, pop culture portraits, and naturalistic animals. He is highly skilled at depicting detailed naturalistic scenes, and his use of light, cloud, and greenery creates scenes that are breathtaking, familiar, and fantastical all at once. Wow. And last but not least, it's Catherine Latour. No stranger to art battle, she has been battling for years. She has provided no biography and simply wants you to know that she was not happy with the painting she did last time at Art Battle. <laughs> Fear the painter scorned. Redemption is a hell of a motivator. Other painters, watch out. It's comeback time for Catherine Latour. <laughs> and there you have it. These are our four painters for round two. Painters, are you ready? They're looking hella ready. Audience, are we ready? Then we are ready. I'm going to set the counter. 20 minutes is all they have to make magic in front of our very eyes. And we're going to count it down from. And we are off. All right. Here we go. 20 minutes of exciting live painting live from the Victoria Event Center in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Woo. Um, and looks like we have some really strong painters uh, hanging out with us tonight as well. Definitely some art battle vets. I loved uh, the way our announcer was talking uh, about Catherine's bio, that she provided no bio. She just wanted the audience to know that she's here for redemption. <laughs> <laughs> I've felt that many a time at art battle. I understand. That's great. Catherine's been in a uh, few art battles, so I guess that she uh, uh, is looking to settle a score with herself from the last time she painted oh man that's gonna be so satisfying i have faith in you Catherine. yeah for sure we are uh underway here the artists are on stage with the audience seated cabaret style which is unusual for art battle but uh, necessary because of covid restrictions uh so a different way to view it here on the live stream it looks pretty much the same though we get an up close view of these painters as they work their magic. And I think that that will, so it provides a unique challenge, but it also provides a unique opportunity um, for these artists to go maybe a little bit bolder, a little bit more vibrant. Um, and just checking out what Corey um, and Nina have going on, I think that they're going for that high contrast, high vibrancy uh, vibe. Yeah, I think that they are. I think that they are. We're, uh, watching Corey right now and uh he is um starting s starting slowly here he's got he's got some vibrant colors on there some drips yeah and, very, uh, very leisurely i like he's got one hand on his hip you know i like the confidence i think bringing a little bit of swagger to the easel yeah and here we have uh catherine out for redemption she is uh painting some circles some colorful circles on the canvas she's got uh she's got some looks like is that magenta or red hard to tell in this light mm -hmm. and interesting approach because i would think that these kind of polka dots would be added as a finishing element but we're starting with it i guess she's going to build around them Maybe we're going to see some uh, some swirls coming out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's that's normally a finishing touch. So, uh, but she's definitely got a plan here. Always um, interesting to try and guess whether a painter has 
practiced their painting before coming to Art Battle or whether they are doing it for the first time live. Uh, artists take different approaches. Some artists practice their painting many times uh, and some artists prefer just to feel it in the moment. Yeah, I think that Catherine is one of those artists that goes for the intuitive um, from just from reading her bio and uh, her talking about kind of approaching things with more of a doodling, uh, like intuitive approach. But knowing she's here for redemption, did she come with a game plan? Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to find out uh, what kind of uh, style she's bringing to the easel as we um, come through here. Mm -hmm. Look like Eve is, looks like Eve is painting a... Uh, that looked like the background for a bird there. We saw a bird in the first round. Yeah, and at that same easel, too. At that same easel, that's right. So it'll be a bird battle. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm really enjoying what Nina's got going on. Uh, she's got kind of these uh, collisions of color uh, starting to blend into each other. Um, and Nina, in her bio, was describing how she really likes to um, challenge viewers with texture. Uh, so I think that we're starting to see some of that in her piece as well. Yeah, she's got a lot of coverage. She's covered the whole canvas already, and she's uh, uh, building up from there. We see uh, Corey here. Still working on the middle with the same brush that he was using the last time we were around here. Yep, he's still got, hand on uh, the hip. Still hand on his hip. <laughs> uh, he's got what looks like maybe a flesh tone there. He could be he could be building out a body. I think uh, you're right. I wasn't sure what it was just until that uh, that one kind of curving stroke that was indicating that torso there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing from Corey is the uh, torso of a woman and maybe maybe the uh, chest and the hips. There's Catherine. She's still bringing the circles. She's uh, got many different colors going on there, different sizes, and uh, is oh. fur furiously mixing her paints. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I didn't expect that. That's cool. That's a nice move. And really a little bit of, uh, energetic, too. Fun strokes with that. Yeah. That's a crowd pleaser for sure. And that's a real, uh, real change-up there. So now we see the way that she was going. We thought those were finishing strokes the way they're complete. Uh, but um, she's definitely she's starting with them uh, early on as her base. And she's smudging them out with a little dry brush technique. Yeah, very performative, um, the way this was done. She was making those polka dots so, so perfect, so circular. And then we're getting these aggressive strokes that are bringing them uh, into each other and into the background. And I think that'll be really fun uh, for the crowd to enjoy. That's right. We're getting back here to uh, Eve and is working. This could be a phoenix rising from the ashes. I'm um, into it could be and she is going to the floor just for Camera a single stroke <laughs> just just for a single stroke just for emphasis there we go um and our voting correspondent gina uh is saying that she thinks that this bird is more aggressive than the first bird little uh, little definitely. less friendly vibes <laughs> Definitely, uh, she's got the she's got the talons up and the uh, the wings up here too. So, what well, we're not seeing a uh, patient uh, pheasant or whatever that bird was in the first round, we're seeing something definitely with a lot more um, anger, I'd say. And interesting technique as well that uh, bringing that kind of performative aspect. Um, by turning and turning and turning the canvas. Um, so I think that Eve is, I think that she's working on this piece for herself, but I also think that it's really playing uh, to the crowd. Yeah, a lot of action there. Love to see an artist really get into their work and their materials. Uh, the crowd loves to see that too. Absolutely. Oh, we have, 
we have some uh, some foreground figures from uh, Nina. Yeah, I think that we're getting some kind of trees rising from almost like a fiery sunset. Look how fast her brush is moving in there. And how close her hair is to the canvas. Like, <laughs> are we going to get uh, are we going to get some body involvement? Is she going to start painting with those pigtails? I don't know. Anything could happen. <laughs> Uh, we've seen artists get paint uh, pretty much everywhere, including in their hair in our battle. Before, <laughs> I know so. that I have. <laughs> it won't be a surprise. <laughs> Just a little bit harder for the audience to uh, see the paintings being worked on with this uh, stage format. Uh, as you said before, the artists are usually in the center of the room, as most uh uh, experienced art battle fans know, but uh, we have them on stage here because of uh, COVID protocols and the audience uh, has to kind of view around the bodies of the painters, but uh, doing the best we can and they're, they're definitely putting on a great show here in Victoria. Absolutely. And that being said, we are approaching the 10 minute mark. Um, so just about halfway through this round. And you, the audience out in the internet, gets to help us choose the top two artists from this round to move on to the third and final, which will determine the winner of the night. So head on over to artbattle.com slash vote and register. Choose your favorite artist, support these guys, uh, and all of the works created tonight are also up for uh, bidding in a silent auction, and we will ship them to you. That's right. If you see something that you like here, take it home and uh, you'll have a great story to tell uh, as you saw the piece uh, created just a very unique experience to uh, add to or to start a collection and speaking of unique experience uh Catherine this is such an uh, unexpected approach and I really am so into the way that she's like created these different stages of this painting like how would you think that we would get here from uh, from the polka dots that we had only nine minutes ago? And it looks yeah. to me like she's starting to transition into a landscape. I think we're going to get a satisfying flip soon. What do you think? Uh, definitely, uh, That's a good call, Morgan. I think that we might see a flip. Uh, those polka dots from before have almost completely disappeared. I wonder if she changed her mind. Yeah, did she change her mind or... Is she just really involving us in this kind of interesting uh, approach to the way that she's doing her painting? Is it, it almost feels like an in joke? Yeah, it would be really great to see a uh, stop motion. If we could have the, uh, if we had a stop motion on every painting, uh, some of them definitely go through many different phases and are indeed many different paintings on the way to the end of the 20 minutes. So uh, that would be very interesting if we could see that yeah i think we get a lot of unexpected twists and turns um and eve here refining her griffin phoenix mystical bird uh i think that you're right though phoenix i'm definitely getting that with uh with this use of warm collar here yeah definitely and she's uh she's left herself a lot of uh background to fill in here. I think we're going to see that filled in by the end of this uh, painting. Uh, I think that uh, she's going to keep working on the body here. And then when we get closer to the end, fill in the background, but you never know. You never know. Uh, definitely some trees in the foreground for Nia here. She's got uh, four trees in there and uh, is working now with a, f a light touch with the finger, smudging some of the paint. I think the only next natural step has to be the pigtails, right? Definitely going to be the pigtails, <laughs> for sure. I like that. They, uh, I think that by using her finger, she's able to tap it in such a way that she's getting that opacity from the white, whereas I think if she was using a brush, that it might blend too much. Yeah, definitely um, an experienced move to know how to get 
solid colors over top of other solid colors in in wet paint. And we're here with Corey now. Um, and it looks like he's just kind of carving out and refining the shape around this torso. Yeah. I wonder if this is a uh, portrait of Kim Kardashian on vacation. <laughs> I think that's the winning comment of the night. <laughs> you know, we all get our inspiration from uh, different places. So. <laughs> I think that's a good call. <sighs> and uh, def definitely, a, definitely looking like a landscape here from Catherine, which she is working on. So our final artists for the final round have just been announced uh, by Art Battle Victoria organizer Lindsay. Uh, and from round number one, we have Dan Zach and Chris Casson coming forward. And from round number two, Nina Parada and Catherine Latour. And we look forward to seeing these artists in just about five minutes or so while they prepare their new palettes um, and approach a totally blank canvas for another 20 minute round of painting. And we will be back in just about five minutes. As you say the flip. Yeah, I think that we are in, I think that she has done this painting in all of these unexpected stages on purpose to kind of give us these thrills. Um, and I think that doing, approaching the landscape from uh, this completely uh, opposite angle is going to provide another one of those thrills for the audience. And I think that she's playing it really smart, um, especially given the way that this venue is set up. Um, she's creating a really good visual story from afar. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And she is using a variety. Of, well, that's a really neat tool that she's got there. That's yeah, almost that's a... Cool. Uh, I think that's a kitchen utensil. Yeah, maybe like a, a bench scraper, like a pastry scraper. Yeah, something like that. I know I uh, one of our artists in Toronto, Matt Wood, likes to... He uh, does drywall... And he brings his full drywall kit with him. I'll, and he uses his trowels. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I remember from uh, a long time ago, Toronto painter uh, Ginger, she used to use the uh, spatula. Yeah. <laughs> and she um, went on to win Art Battle Los Angeles. So Yeah, she's a she... really cool painter. Yeah, she put, she comes out with some uh, some great creations there, and uh, having painted in multiple, we've seen a, quite a few artists paint in multiple cities. That's one of the uh, benefits we have about being in so many different locations. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that Eve is doing exactly. Oh, oh, what's happening now? That's, uh, that's kind of the surprise that you get. I start to make a, a comment about one thing and then boom, artists switch to another thing. Yeah. There we go. Nina's still working on her trees. They're looking pretty good there. I think that uh, she's painted in a crescent moon. Uh, and I think that Catherine has a moon in her painting too. It's a nice night for the moon. If you've seen it, it is a uh, waxing crescent tonight. Just beautifully. It's just set in about, uh, it's just set in the east. It's 
probably still up in the West. Yeah, I can't see it from where I'm at. I just see the reflection of my giant light bulb in my window. <laughs> but, ah, the moon is close to you. Yeah. Okay, and more uh, work just going into kind of the shadows of this torso. I like the red um, that was introduced on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, it's very striking and uh, creates a great uh, pop off the, uh, the blue. Catherine, achieving that redemption, the way that she's used that tool um, to create these waves is just so interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, Going to be awesome when she turns it for a final presentation at the end. How much time do we have left? Uh, two minutes and 20 seconds. All right. So, again, all of you out in the Internet, if you haven't uh, gone on over to artbattle.com slash vote, that's where you can register to vote and support these artists. Uh, they are working hard for you right now, so make sure that you support them. Every vote counts. That's right, and uh, don't forget that you can also bid in the silent auction to take one of these pieces home. Or if you're voting from the Internet, have it shipped to you. That's awesome. You just you fall in love with these pieces as they're being created. Um, and up until now, basically, the only opportunity for buyers has been people in the actual room. Um, and yeah. now we've just increased that accessibility. Yep, definitely. And we've seen uh, a lot of people from remote locations take advantage of that and we've been shipping a lot of paintings recently so hopefully that uh, continues and adds to the uh, size of the community rounding out on our final minute here these artists are just placing their final strokes i'm starting to see a little bit of that that frantic energy which i always love to see in the last minute these uh, final thoughtful strokes Yeah, definitely crunch time when the uh, MC announces one minute left. You got to make a decision. Are you going to depart from the strategy that you've been using for 19 minutes? Or are you going to keep going through? Sometimes you see painters in a little bit of a, uh, I won't say a panic, but they change their mind a little bit in the last minute and try and add in an extra detail or change it up or maybe that was their strategy all along to uh as you usually say morgan to be a performance artist totally and it's just i think that the last minute is where the most risk risk happens are you gonna ruin it with that new idea or is it gonna all come together <laughs> okay and we're getting them counting down now Down and a turn of Catherine's painting. Big round of for our round two artists. All right. Yes. Let's artists, hear it for these artists. Sign your work. So good. Your so artists, good. Sign your work. People are going to bid on it for auction. And oh, a beautiful piece from Catherine. And they'll be worth millions of dollars. In nice no nude from Amazing Corey. Work. You know the drill now. Get those and I like the, uh, the we'll final introduction of movement um, in you that phoenix one if you still from that, Eve. Get those votes in, and we'll be back yeah. with our final round as soon as we can. Ah, and we did see that Catherine turned her piece. She did turn her piece right as time went, right as the clock hit zero. Nice. What a nice finishing touch. All right, so now all of our qualifying artists have painted for the night. Uh, so the top two artists, as voted by the audience and you out in the internet uh, for round one and round two, will go on to the third and final round with four new canvases where one winner will emerge at the end of the night. And that winner will then move on to the Victoria City Finals. 
very exciting. And of course, the winner of the Victoria City Finals will represent the city at the national championships, which will be held in Toronto in July. And then the winner of that will go on to the international championships. And then the winner of that will go on to the intergalactic championships. <laughs> they may, but they may have to. Uh, they may have to wait a few years for that one. <laughs> so good, so good. All right, and we will. It looks like our team is just uh, letting the votes roll in on their end. Um, and they're going to take a few minutes to reset and get ready for the third and final round. So in the meantime, we're going to replay uh, some of this awesome painting action. And we will be right back with you in about 10 minutes. Great. Stick around. That's so cool. It's like yeah, there's two loose. painters. She, he's painting and also the, you know. Down from 10, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's paint. And Tim, you, uh, you throw in your phone number, you get a special voting link, and you can. Those are the biggies. Um, and so thank you for being here. We're going to see some great art tonight. Yeah, 19 minutes on the clock. Uh, 20 minutes total for these artists to go from blank canvas to awesome masterpiece. You guys are going to vote at artbattle.com slash vote uh, for the best painters tonight. Yeah, you can register to vote even right now. Uh, hop up there. Uh, uh, you throw in your phone number, you get a special voting link, and you can vote. You can bid. Uh, we will ship these paintings, and we will ship them uh, in Canada and uh, internationally. All right, Morgan, what do we see here? We got we got uh, one of our artists is uh, on the ground. That's always an interesting technique. I believe that this is Dan Zach, and we've got some uh, good compartmentalization going on with uh, some painter's tape already. I love it when the painter's tape comes out. It leaves such, you know, even if you just put a, a bunch of, you know, random m m mishmash on there, when you peel that tape off, you get those perfect clean lines and it's such an attractive piece and if you know even even better if you're a good painter uh, you can have an even better result absolutely it always the the last minute tape pulling always gives my brain tingles totally it's it's like that visual asmr stuff exactly sure. exactly you know, it, 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 like how clean is that line is it super clean is it the <laughs> tiny little bit that bleed under so satisfyingly crispy it is it is exactly uh, what do we got here? Is this uh, this is a bird of some kind? Uh, I'm I sure. believe that that is Julie Gagne at uh, easel number one. And yes, I think that you're right. I think we've got a a plumed bird, a bright yellow plumed bird. Is is this artist known for her for her uh, avian uh, uh, plumage? She is known for her avian plumage. Actually, um, I was just creeping her Instagram earlier today. And I uh, saw a similar bird rocking the uh, the feathered mohawk there. Fantastic. I love it. And I see here this artist uh, is uh, Jessica. I can't quite read her last name. Jessica, I love this palette. The, the subtle, the slight shading difference between the sort of the, 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 the rough shapes that she's got on there already is fantastic. Absolutely. And Jessica was actually a 2019 city finalist for Victoria. Ooh. So we can definitely expect a gorgeous piece from her. Great, great. Ooh, and we're headed. Are we hanging out with Chris now? Looks like we're hanging out with Chris. Yeah, Chris Casson. This is a, I love a good dry brush technique. You, you get, uh, you get something really special 
Um, and I think we're seeing clouds here. Cloud, clouds and dry brush can be very, very good friends. Oh yeah, you get that beautiful kind of soft, soft blending uh, mm -hmm. with the dry brush, especially in those clouds. And this is a bit of a lighter palette than I think that we're used to seeing from Chris. Mm -hmm. um, usually well, you never he's know where you go from here. Yes, that's true. Yeah, the the dry brush, especially if a lot of a lot of artists have you know have have their arsenal of of brushes. Um, but one of the things I love about a dry brush is it preserves the potential to use the same brush throughout the entire painting, and that always really blows me away from a talent perspective. Mm -hmm. As long as you're wiping it off and getting all of that excess off, you can just keep carrying that. Ooh, check yeah, out well, I mean, Dan. You go, you go wetter and wetter. Yeah. So yes. we've got on the complete opposite spectrum. So with Chris, we've got really dry brush technique. And then Dan, we've got this like gorgeous watercolor application. Um, and I'm just, I'm living for this. Yeah, fantastic. The, um, oh, and already we have some, Ooh. we have the uh, tape coming I didn't think off. we were going to get that satisfaction though. No, early. <laughs> there you go. I hope you guys are ready for that. That was special. Great. Yeah. Uh, definitely I'm feeling a landscape coming alive there. Yeah. And now we've got that kind of super crisp uh, horizon line. Yeah. Okay. And back to hang out with Julie. Oh, this bird is going to be fantastic. Yeah. I'm liking the way that she's layered these colors here. She's got the cerulean over that bright primary yellow, and it's mixing a little bit into some green tones, but we're still getting the vibrancy of each color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great and some really interesting like fluid movement here oh and now we're getting a, a dark background to kind of contrast the vibrancy of this bird I'm really happy there's a background coming in I, I didn't want to start talking about backgrounds because we're only you know whatever 15 you know five minutes in mm -hmm. but um, that's a very dark background so it'll be interesting to see Interesting. I mean, she's a lot of time left. It'd be interesting to see where she goes from there because, of course, you can't really do much on top of that black. Oh, and check out what Jessica's got going on. I'm really loving these uh, drips that she's just yeah. allowing to cascade throughout. Uh, what I'm getting the vibe of is a mountainous landscape. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think uh, absolutely. Uh, but of course, it's it's a very clearly a landscape painting. Uh, you know, it's it's very uh, painterly, as they say, because it's it's clear that because of the drips, this is this is calling to us and saying this is essentially a, almost a painting of a painting um, of of a mountainscape. And so that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And Julie, uh, or sorry, Jessica, um, has described her painting process and what she loves the most is to start with kind of a, a super gestural paint sketch um, mm. and allow the paint to work its own magic um, as well as herself directing it that's so cool it's like yeah, there's two loose. painters she he's painting and also the you know the medium itself is having its own effect mm -hmm. and i think that can also be said uh for dan when we pan over to him with his watercolor piece um, but for now, we've got Chris with this really, really subtle color palette. Um, and I think that this is a almost fully landscape round with uh, just with Julie and the bird and the rest looks like landscape. Well, that bodes well for Julie. Um, but uh, these are some very strong contenders, um, Jessica and uh, 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 Chris here. Is this Chris? Yes. And yeah, I'm really... This is I'm I'm so into this the subtlety here. Yeah, I wonder if there's going to be any sort of high, you know, darker highlights that come off on the uh, the top. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not looking for that. Um, it is a it's a beautiful, but it's hard for the audience, the in person audience, to appreciate it from that distance back without it. I think. Yeah, it, uh, seeing whether or not he's going to add contrast into that because it is a really beautiful subtle piece. Um, but that's a great point in terms.
Yes. We've got Dan, Chris, Nina, and Catherine, our top four painters of the night, ready to paint for a second time. Can they make the magic happen yet again? Yes. Yes, they can. We, we know the four by now. They got 20 minutes. We're going to vote on who's best. They're all winners. We love them. Great. Love seeing the art. Honestly, it's just amazing to see people together in the same space. Like, it's, it's come to this. It's amazing to even be in the room breathing the same air, and here we are, and it's great. So we're going to do that while watching some painting, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Audience, are we ready? Painters, are we ready? Is my phone ready to sit? Yes. Timer on the phone is ready. So we're going to count it down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. All right, and we are off to the third and final round of Art Battle of Victoria tonight. Uh, my name is Morgan Booth, and I'm here with Art Battle co-founder Chris Pemberton, and we are your live painting commentary hosts for the night. Hi, Chris. Hey, Morgan. How are you doing? So good. So good. Looking forward to uh, seeing what these guys do. Been a great uh, night so far, and uh, we've seen uh, landscapes from all four of these painters in the first two rounds. So we will uh, see what they bring here in the third and final round. Is it going to be four landscapes again, or are we going to see a little bit of mix-up? I think we're going to see... Uh, something different from at least one of the painters for sure. Yeah. I think that the possible landscape deviators are going to be either Nina or Catherine. That's my prediction. I think that Dan and Chris are going to stick with the landscapes. Although I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You could be wrong here. We have um, <clears throat> on easel number one here, this is uh, Dan and, uh, He's got his tape across at the uh, optimum proportion line here. So looking like he is starting, he is going to do a landscape in with his canvas in the portrait position. Yeah. Um, another... but we, have, we have something different from Chris here. Yeah, I spoke too soon. I thought that uh, that Chris would be coming with another landscape, but I don't think this is landscape. No, it does not look like the beginning of a landscape. It looks like an owl. I was I was like, is it too early to call? But is I think it too it's early, an owl no. too. I, I yeah, I think I think maybe it is. Nice. Interesting. Uh, yeah interesting approach to uh, sketch out the eyes first usually we see uh, the body done first we've seen two birds tonight well a bird and a questionable a creature that was uh, a bird-like creature in the second round so yeah. griffin phoenix and we have a, we have what looks like going to be a self-portrait from nina i'm really excited about that like we're two minutes in and already she's really got the gesture of the hair down and yeah. and a pretty good uh, proportionate drawing for the face. Um, and I think from Catherine, looks like she's filled her canvas with white, I think. So she's going to be, I think we can anticipate some more of those blending techniques from her working into that wet white. Yeah, that looks like what she's going to do here. This is, as she said, a night of redemption for her, and she has already redeemed herself making it to the final round. So she's got to be feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, go, Catherine. That's awesome. I love uh, that she declared uh, and had the MC declare that she was here for redemption, and she's making good on that promise um, by making it into the final already. That's right. Very great work. We're proud of you. And she is on her way. Could be anything there on that easel. Uh, from Nina, we do see a, almost a perfect rendition of her own hair. There. I know. I'm so excited about it. And I think that she's doing a blue figure. 
which I would know something about. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh, and some interesting technique from Dan already, um, getting this, using this directional spatter. That's cool. Yeah. He's got some cool effects there. He's already got a, um, some pretty wet uh, dripping there, lots of water, and now some uh, some little splashing from the brush. So he is uh, he is on his way with his own techniques there. I hope he's not splashing the other competitors. <laughs> That's a hazard. That's the hazard that you take in art battle. Don't wear your favorite shirt, even if it is plaid. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely the plaid round here. Mm-hmm. And I, we're definitely right. This has got to be an owl. Yeah, it definitely looks like him. Definitely looks an owl. He is working with a very large palette knife. It's not even a palette knife. That is a, uh, I don't know what you call that. Yeah, That's we've a, like crossed over from... Uh, pallet knife almost into like pie lift. Yeah. And I really like the way that it's bending on the canvas. Um, that's more kind of subtle movement than I would expect to be getting from such a large tool. Yeah. No, some definitely some, uh, some good action there. And uh, we have Nina with her blue faced we're going to call this a uh, self-portrait. I think at this point we have to. I think you have to. She's she's nailed the hair there. That looks exactly like her hairstyle. Yeah, she did a really great job um, just like roughing in that gesture of the hair. And honestly, I don't think she has to refine the hair that much more. No, she's got it there. She's got it. Okay, and getting more of this very performative, um, aggressive blending happening from Catherine. Yeah. She's had her canvas in uh, both directions there. She's, uh, as we saw with her in the second round, she painted a piece at a 90 degree angle from its true form. So we could be seeing, we could be seeing any side could be up with Catherine. You don't know. So cool. Oh, yeah. It looks like the tape has come off of Dan's painting. Mm-hmm. He had some tape there. It looks like it's come off, and it uh, looks like he is uh, filling in a waterfront on what looks like a landscape. Ooh, that was a nice stroke there. Oh, yeah, really nice. And uh, something interesting that Dan had mentioned in his bio um, when he was talking about his approach to painting, and especially as a watercolor artist that he really enjoys letting the media, um, he directs it, but he also really enjoys the result of it doing its own thing um, and working within that inspiration and challenge. So I think he's really doing that um, here. Yeah, no, it's um, very interesting to see. Sometimes painters have a great contrast between their studio work and their art battle work. Uh, but it looks like he is keeping his style true to his studio form there, working with the acrylics almost as if they're watercolors. Yes, very, very close. And as uh, Simon mentioned earlier, that's really difficult to do on a gessoed canvas as watercolor is uh, absorbed. That's part of the media, um, but it's not really able to do that on a gessoed canvas. So I'm really impressed with that um, application there. Oh, and we're getting some rotation from Catherine. Some vigorous rotation. I think she's trying to get some, uh, I think she's trying to get some drips to go in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Did she have that taped or did she just do that freehand? I got to say, you must have had that taped. At that point, I'm like, what kind of superpower does Catherine have if she got that, uh, that straight aligned without taping that? Yeah. And now she's in. She's into that white space with some darker colors here. Mm-hmm. Now, she painted a landscape on a ninety-degree angle, 
in the second round. It looks like maybe she's doing the same thing now. I think uh, that would be a safe, uh, safe assumption. Yeah. So it's a pretty clear divide to me. I think it's it's pretty unusual um, for a canvas that's meant to stay in that portrait style or in that portrait orientation to have such a half and half thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, no, it looks like it's uh, going to be a landscape. Here we have, hard to say which, either side could be the top here for Dan. Yeah. He's, he looks like he was painting it in its, the way it was, but now, now I'm not so sure. that He might have this, he might be going with it upside down and having those drips defy gravity when he spins it around the other way. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's hard to tell with this piece because um, at this point, there's a very similar weight um, in the top and the bottom, so it could go either way. Um, and here we're back with Chris and his owl. And yeah. going in there with a smaller brush this time. Do you think that he'll be adding in a background or do you think that uh, everything will be focused on the figure of this owl here? Um, I, I, I love to see a background brought in at the end. That's one of my favorite uh, art battle techniques. So I certainly hope he does bring in a background. Yeah, it just really rounds everything out. Um, and we are just at the 10 minute mark here. And if you are out there in the internets and you want to support these artists, you will get to choose or contribute to choosing the winner of the night by your vote. So head on over to artbattle.com slash vote, register, support these artists. They are painting their hearts out. One of them will be the winner. You can help choose. Uh, and all of the works created tonight are also up for silent auction. So you can bid um, to take these pieces home. We will ship them to you. Absolutely. Still a lot of nice paintings with uh, either low bids or no bids. So uh, get in there and take one of these paintings home. Yeah, a great accessible way to start your collection. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you, get, uh, you can get a better price here than you can for studio work. Uh, is usually the case. Sometimes the bids go higher, but uh, with a starting point of uh, $60. It's a very affordable way to uh, get started. And we're seeing Catherine with this uh, business card technique. Now that's something that we see in our battle fairly often um, and with some of our favorite painters actually. I love seeing uh, somebody whip out a good card. Yeah. For sure. I think that's her own business card. Usually is. Yeah, business card, bus pass. I remember seeing, I remember being so shocked washing brushes one day and uh, actually washing a bank card and telling the artist, I'm like, did you paint with your bank card? And they're like, no, it's an old one. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in the moment you just grab whatever's handy. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> Someone buy that painter a drink because they can't buy it themselves <laughs> <laughs> all right i think that we're starting to get um more established with dan's piece and the orientation what do you think uh yeah i i i'm still not sure here i'm still not sure but um i think maybe he is going to leave it this way interesting he looked like he was going to have a body of water in the foreground but it does not look that way anymore I Looks think we like might be getting like a pier. Yeah. Could be. Could be. He's really uh, got a lot going on there in that piece. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're getting some good attitude uh, from mm -hmm. this owl over here. And from Chris himself with, uh, with the knife in his mouth. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, just a little squeeze of some more paint there. Mm-hmm mixing it up or he's mixing a lot maybe he's going to do his background now he's got a wider brush yeah and kind of cutting around the figure of the owl 
Yep, using one hand to steady nice. as he goes I like around. That technique, that hand steadying technique. That's cool. Yeah, very cool to watch. Very cool to watch. And we're getting into the kind of refining stages on Nina's portrait. Um, some highlights going in there. Her figure's got glasses now. Yeah, this is this is her at a different stage. This is not her at Art Battle tonight. We can you can tell because she hasn't tried to replicate her uh, white and red checkered shirt. Yeah, and she's definitely uh, less blue in person. A little bit less blue. <laughs> this is really interesting. What uh, Catherine's going on? I love that she's playing so much with texture in this piece. And looks like we're getting little trees. Oh, yeah. And trees and the reflections of the trees in the water. And we are just at about five minutes remaining. Uh, if you are out there watching with us in the internet, we would love to hear from you. Um, and we would love to have you cast your votes for these artists, head on over to artbattle.com slash vote. And yeah, really cool technique um, of these trees. And then uh, you said that you believe that those are reflections. I think you're right. Yeah, I think they are. We hear the audience uh, cheering there, seeing something they like for sure. Nice. There's a lot to uh, a lot to like going on here right now. And she's using that same um, technique of, of that rapid blending, but mm -hmm. on a smaller scale for the reflected trees. And I like seeing that. It's a technique that she's using consistently, um, but in large and small ways, different applications of the same technique. Yeah. Yeah, she's going at it right now, quite, really hard. Wow, with Dan's piece, you're really getting that sense of sunset um, with that yellow coming out of that uh, the warm, like, red-pinky color. Yeah, very nice. A nice companion piece to his, uh, to his first effort of the evening. Absolutely. And really uh, so honoring of the media as well. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if we're going to see him uh, sketch in a, uh, a building or other human structure into this painting. Mm -hmm. Or if we're going to be continually treated to just like this imaginary landscape. Mm -hmm. These brushes are interesting. I really like these. Uh, almost they... I know they're watercolor brushes, but they remind me of the Chinese ink brushes. Yeah, very much. And a few times in his previous piece, I saw him kind of twist it and uh, like create tines in the bristles of the brush to create uh, like different strokes, which was really cool. Something very interesting with Chris that... Uh line that he did down the outside with his hand so carefully with both hands is the shadow of the bird yeah i did not anticipate that i thought that was going to no. be like a full uh a full color going into the background but it's really cool it looks like this uh this owl is almost in a studio against a white backdrop absolutely yeah really great use of the space really great use of the white space mm -hmm. there and good presence uh, as well, this creature is just like, it's just emphasizing the presence of this creature. Yeah. Is he working on his signature there? I think he is. Um, and I got to say, careful planning. Good job, Chris. Very careful, yeah. And getting that stare from uh, Nina. 
and you can really see those eyes come alive with uh, the addition of those catch lights. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great highlights there too in the hair. Mm -hmm. Really, really gives depth to the piece. All right, just about a minute and a half. I hope that we uh, that we catch the flip from Catherine this time. Yeah, a lot of noise there from the audience. The audience seated cabaret style tonight, as we've said before, because of COVID restrictions, the artists, the audience is not freestanding, moving around the easels. Everybody is seated and masked. Uh, and we are at half capacity, unfortunately. I'd like to get more people there, but uh, it, we did sell out at half capacity. So thank you, Victoria, for continuing to support uh, live arts. Absolutely. And oh, I'm just so in love with the way that this light is coming through in, uh, in the horizon of Dan's piece. Okay, and we're getting our countdown. I'm going to throw it to the venue now. All right, are we ready to count this down in 10? Woo, brushes down. So that marks Amazing the work, end Peter. of our third and final yes. round. Well done, everyone. Don't forget to sign those canvases. All right. All great Time to do the arms. work of casting your vote now. Go to artbattle.com slash vote and have your say as to which of these painters should be crowned art battle champion tonight. Yeah, one will emerge victorious. That's right. I had to go there. <laughs> I couldn't not make that pun. <laughs> Thought you'd like that one. That's good. <laughs> all right, so all of the votes will be starting to roll in uh, from everyone in the room and from you guys online. I think that we have a nice, uh, strong round um, in this final. And I think that Catherine, regardless of whether or not she wins, um, she said that she came seeking redemption. And I think that both of the pieces that sh she created tonight were really, really strong. And I would say that that's, that's her redemption. Yeah, she's done herself proud tonight, for sure. All right, and we are going to take a little break while the votes are coming in. And we will check it back in with you in a few minutes. Great, stick around, find out who's going to be the winner.
All right, Art Battle, are we ready to find out tonight's winners? Yes. First, let's give a huge round of applause to all the painters. Everyone was amazing tonight. Yes. So much good art right before our eyes. It takes a lot of nerve to paint in front of strangers, right? So respect to all the artists tonight. Before I tell you who wins, just a reminder that all the artwork is available for auction and we're gonna close that in about 15 minutes. So if you have a favorite painting, make sure you get your bid in now. And just a note that we are back here on February 11th. If you love the event, I'd love to see you again. And tonight's winner who will advance to our finals in June is Chris. Please come here. You're allowed to mingle with me. <laughs> Let's give a big extra round of applause for Chris. How are you feeling? Do you have anything to say to the audience that voted you the winner? No, thank you for coming. It's really great to you know, see live art in 20 minutes, man. Oh, for an artist, that is never enough. Never. I, I used to be a, a, a teacher in paint nights. And I've seen two hours worth of work, and it's hard. And people just got to apply the, themselves a little bit and just keep going and do it lightly and nice. And it's fun. Believe in yourself. Yeah, believe in yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Please stick around if you'd like for a little bit longer. Bid on some artwork. Chat with me. It is available for a silent auction. Great, yeah. Some great pieces there, Lindin. And uh, they should all find homes. So if you haven't bid on a piece that you like, now's the time. Get in there and get your bid in before the auction closes. All right, so once again, uh, congratulations to Chris Casson, winner of Art Battle Victoria, who will move, or tonight's event in Art Battle Victoria, who will move on to the Victoria Finals. Uh, very, very excited to have him there, and a huge thank you to all of the amazing breed uh, and creative artists that painted with us tonight. Yeah, a lot of great work here tonight and another inspiring evening of creative community. So thank you very much to the artists, thanks to the audience, and thanks to everybody who helped make this event possible. Amazing. And we will see you uh, online very soon for more Art Battle uh, live events. Just follow us on Facebook and Instagram where they will be announced. And if you are interested in painting um, in Art Battle, head on over to artbattle.com. We are always looking for new artists. Um, and all of our shows, our upcoming shows, will be posted there. So we hope to see you guys at the Easels soon. Great. Always exciting to meet new artists for sure. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you for joining us. Good night.